Hey guys, it's Ross, and uh, I want to do a quick video for you guys on a topic that I'm so excited about. I'm so excited to tell you about this topic. Uh, I, I've just been obsessed with it since I've learned, since I've been introduced to it, and I've just been trying to learn as many different things about it as I can, um, which is, I th believe, a solution to... Uh, many fig growers not you know not just hobbyists but also people that are looking to start a commercial fig orchard in Florida uh, because when we think about where figs are cultivated uh, they're cultivated in many European countries that are mostly dry um, and in California here in the United States um, there are some people cultivating some figs in Florida don't get me wrong there are some people that are um, growing them commercially there and selling the fruit, but it's really difficult and it's difficult for a couple reasons. So one is that it's very humid there. There's lots of rain. Um, figs like a dry climate. They don't like too much rain. The rain actually uh, lessens the fruit quality. Uh, they're, it's a drought tolerant plant. They, they actually like to be growing in a, a drier soil so that the fruits can actually sweeten up uh, much more. It's a pretty significant difference. Um, in addition to that, um, the humidity can cause the figs to split, um, or the rain can really uh, cause certain varieties um, just to completely ruin the fig. Uh, and when the fig splits, as an example, um, there could be molds, uh, the fig could spoil. It's just really not a good thing. Another reason, and I'm not an expert on soils, but I can tell you that probably. The soil in California is probably better than it is in Florida um, across the board. So there's that. But the third most, uh, the third reason why that you really only see commercial fig operations in California is because Florida, the soils in Florida are littered with root knot nematodes. And if you don't know what root knot nematodes are, they essentially disrupt the roots of many species of plants. Um, Ficus carica, which is the species that w we talk about figs and we talk about the fruit of figs, that we go to the store and we buy fruit. Uh, that's Ficus carica, that the fruit that we've been cultivating for thousands of years, our ancestors have been you know, cultivating for thousands of years. That's the species Ficus carica, okay? And, you know, like I say that root knot nematodes really, really mess with ficus carica. Uh, it's the point where it inhibits growth pretty significantly. It, um, it lessens production, the fruit size is lessened, um, and I'm sure the fruit quality is even lessened. It's just really not um, a good thing. And lots of people struggle for years. They've been trying to find some kind of solution to uh, this problem. You know, now we have the commercial citrus industry in, Fl in Florida that's kind of dying off with the greening that's happening. Um, so maybe, uh, you know, I think that's coming back, but maybe we can now, with this video, you know, help me spread this around. And obviously some testing is going to be uh, needed, you know. Um, but I think you guys, if you spread this around, it might just change lots of people's lives in the United States uh, and I, I really would like to think that this video, it would be awesome if this video was a part of that. So here's the details, right? So Ficus carica is really riddled with root knot nematodes. But what isn't? Um, well, there's a species that people have been kind of studying for years, and there is a lot of information on uh, Ficus palmata. Uh, there's many different Ficus species and the problem is that few of them are actually um, root knot nematode resistant and few of them are graft compatible with ficus carica okay so ficus palmata is actually um, and we can we can read about it here so I have some things for you guys we can talk about so uh, ficus palmata according to Ira Condit in his monograph here he says that it's the Indian form of Ficus carica, um, which is true. It actually, 
it kind of originated according to this map they're saying that it kind of started in india and has gradually went its way through the middle east here's iraq um and it's just kind of gone over here even into africa which i um which i think is quite accurate we go back to the wakanda's having to say he's saying that it's practically evergreen in mild climates um you know, it, it has new growth starting in late January. He talks about the mamey crop, the profici crop. Uh, and then he also mentions another species that he th says is a ficus pseudo carica, which I believe um, it's also it's also been used to hybridize with ficus carica. So in the wild, and even I believe some breeders have actually been breeding ficus carica with ficus palmata. I mean, it happens naturally in the wild, um, but, you know, this is like becoming a thing. And when we think about ficus palmata, you know, there's many benefits to ficus palmata. There's many benefits to ficus carica. And when we think about ficus carica, like, I've, like I said before, we think about the fruit. The fruit quality is better. Almost nine times out of ten maybe even more than that. I mean, it's nine, 99 times out of 100, 999 times out of 1,000. The fruit quality is better. Um, so that that's one major plus of ficus carica. It's also a hardier plant. So uh, ficus palmata can handle temperatures below 32, but ficus carica can handle temperatures when dormant all the way down to uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm living proof of that there's many people that grow figs in zone 7a i'm growing them here in zone 7a near philadelphia and they literally have no dieback this year um after getting hit with zero degrees weather there's no microclimate to speak of they're out in the open um yeah so it's just it's incredible the hardiness of ficus carica but that's that's another thing ficus palmata also has some some benefits to it like i've mentioned uh, it's root not nematode resistant. Um, it's more vigorous than ficus carica, and it's uh, FMV resistant. So there's no fig mosaic virus on it, um, which is nice. Not that it's a huge problem with ficus carica, but you know there is there are some nice positives and negatives here with each particular species. And what people have been doing, like I've said, with that you know that Condit here is talking about, is that. They've been breeding them together, ficus carica with ficus palmata, and have kind of been trying to find the best of both worlds to combine it into one plant that is um, just superior, is, is what I like to look at them like. Uh, I think these hybrids between the two are just immensely superior to ficus carica. Um, so let's read more about them. Here's, a, here's a, uh, a book on agriculture, on nematodes, and it talks about figs. Work has also been carried out to develop root knot resistant rootstocks for fig. Tests in California revealed that while all ficus carica specimens examined were susceptible to root knot nematodes, four other ficus species showed a high degree of resistance to unidentified species of root knot nematodes, as well as good graph compatibility with ficus carica. Um, they also mentioned that LSU purple that was bred by Louisiana State University is also uh, nematode resistant. I have seen a, uh, a piece of a document that LSU actually published stating that. Um, also, LSU purple is very vigorous. So it could be a very, very good rootstock for people in Florida. It's also quite hardy, LSU purple. So... Uh, yeah, if you live somewhere maybe north of Florida, maybe in a colder region of Florida, uh, in northern Florida, or maybe you live in Georgia, maybe you live somewhere in like zone 8, uh, but your soils are infested with nematodes, you might want to look at LSE Purple as a rootstock. And maybe you could even have, you know, some kind of a commercial orchard even, even north of Florida. Um, so then, yeah, you, you got LSE Purple, and then... Um, Let's look at uh, another study here. So this is actually a study that was done in Japan, I believe. And they did a study about 21 fig varieties 
and they grew them for three years in a um, in a soil that's basically riddled with root knot nematodes, aka soil sickness. And um, basically, what they did was they ended up coming out with the conclusion that um, ZD is actually a very suitable rootstock for uh, tolerance to root knot nematodes. And I don't, I don't know what the hardiness is of ZD, but I can tell you that it probably is pretty hardy because it is a Ficus carica species. Again, it might be another great choice for grafting onto and using it as rootstock. Uh, another rootstock that might be worth looking into is one called Alma. And Alma was bred by uh, Texas A&M. And it was used, um, they used the, a female fig called Allison and a male capper fig called Hama. And Hama, if you do a little bit more research on Hama, you'll find out that Hama actually is a hybrid. It's a Ficus carica, Ficus palmata hybrid. So Alma is actually a hybrid as well. And, um, a, you know, again, it could make a very nice rootstock for people uh, trying to open up a commercial orchard or even just the hobbyists. Um, they say that Alma is hardy down to about... It, they say it's frost sensitive, like it says right here, but I've heard the opposite. I've heard contradictions. I've also heard that it's super vigorous, while this article right here is contradicting that as well. Interesting. Uh, but then we go to... Uh, some more uh, hybrids that I found, and I put them together into an album here so that people can access this album and kind of uh, help use this to help identify what a hybrid looks like. Because you can kind of tell um, visually the difference between, you, you definitely can tell the difference between Ficus palmata and Ficus carica, but you necessarily can't say the same thing about the hybrids, um, telling the difference between a hybrid and, a, and Ficus carica. So I put together this this thing here to help you guys easily identify this. And these are varieties that are now coming into the United States. They're not in the United States yet. Um, this is one that is in the United States. Um, this is actually in the USDA collection and you can get it from them if you have access to them for, probably for nothing, um, cuttings. Uh, also you can get it from Harvey at figaholics.com. He sells it for about $5 a cutting and this is a Palmata hybrid um, that the USDA keeps in their collection. It also produces quite nice fruit. So uh, if you <laughs> if you have the wasp near you, I think this, this variety might need the wasp. But uh, yeah, the fruit looks pretty damn good too. And then we have a fig up here in this top row that is actually growing in... Um, it was growing in Iran. And here's pictures of it in Iran. Um, you'll see that it actually produces two, two uh, figs per node. Uh, really interesting fruit set here. And uh, the other nice thing is that, the other thing we have to pay attention to is this leaf, this leaf pattern here. It's a spade leaf, triangle shaped, heart shaped, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is very typical of Ficus palmata and its hybrids, having this, this leaf structure here. So this is one sign that it can, you can use to help identify uh, a hybrid. Another interesting, um, well, also the double fig thing is, is definitely a nice indicator. You'll also note that the stems are pretty decently long. We're going to get to that. But in addition to that is the, the bark. The bark of the tree actually is quite hairy. It has these little white hairs on them. Fuzzy, hairy, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is also a, a, a key characteristic of Ficus palmata hybrids. Here's the fruit, close up of the fruit. Oh, and the, and the stem is just quite long. It's just an interesting stem that doesn't really normally look like uh, many Ficus carica varieties that I've, I've seen. Another variety here is called Hava, and Hava is, originates from uh, Egypt. It's another hybrid. And Hava is interesting for many reasons, um, not just because it's a hybrid. It is like really prized in Egypt, and I really recommend you guys look up this fig and do some research on it. It's also called uh, Fayumi and Sultani. 
Um, very popular fig in Egypt, like I said. You'll note here that there's the heart-shaped spade, uh, spade leaves. Here is a picture of Daniel Yakir with uh, Hava. And Daniel Yakir, I believe, was cultivating this variety as well. Daniel Yakir is, or was, one of the largest growers of figs in Israel. He had about 350 varieties and um, was really well loved for his work in Israel. Again, here's more, more of that leaf pattern here where it's triangular shapes. You might have another lobe coming in here like this. Um, and here's the close up of the fig. Um, and you'll see here, so here's the fig right here, but right next to that, over here kind of, and over here is that hairiness that I'm talking about. Um, it is a little bit hairy here. It's tough to see, it's tough to really tell for sure, but um, there's the hairiness that I'm talking about. Here's more pictures of the fig. And here's another variety, the last variety I want to tell you guys about. It's called Iraqi. So it originated in Iraq. We have one that originated in Iran, Iraq, Egypt, and then all the Ficus palmana species are in that area. You know, they're all from India in a way and have migrated over to the Middle East. I guess Iran, you know, and Iraq is kind of up in this direction outside of this red zone here. Um, but if they inherit the characteristics of Ficus carica uh, and become hardy, there's no reason why they can't be grown in Egypt and, and Iraq and Iran. Uh, but Iraqi here is another one. Note the very, very long stem. This is an unusually long stem. It just looks very unusual to me, uh, having seen so many pictures and have grown so many um, varieties of Ficus carica. This just looks alien-like to me. Same thing with the leaf pattern. It's a heart-shaped uh, spade as well. Here's a close-up of the fruit. The fruit actually looks quite good. And then again, here's the bark that looks somewhat hairy. Um, just a quite an interesting characteristic. The fruit even looks kind of hairy as well. Um, I have had a couple of, I have had maybe one or two varieties that I was like, wow, the skin of this fig is actually quite hairy. And I wonder if um, that is also a trait of these hybrids or not. Uh, but yeah, so those are just many of the uh, hybrids that I found or varieties that are uh, resistant to root knot nematodes and whether or not the hybrids are the future or maybe something like Alma or something like ZD or something like LSU Purple. Whatever it is, I think it's very doable to do a commercial fig operation in Florida. Uh, assuming you have these root stocks and you have varieties that are um, resistant to moisture and hold up well to the rain and don't split very often, uh, you can get some very high quality fruit. Um, also, site, site selection is going to be really important too. I mean, the best your best bet is probably to, to be on a high elevated place that is having a slope that really is draining off somewhere um, because you don't want these figs to be growing in lots of water. You really want them to be growing in a, a drier climate. And that, that dryness in the soil is actually going to increase, increase the bricks of these fruits, increase the sugar content, um, cause less spoilage that way, and you're going to have much taste to your fruits that way. So, uh, guys, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys can um, spread this one around um, because I really want to get the word out here on, on this particular video specifically, more so than the other ones. This topic is just... Um, really interesting to me like I've said so if you guys enjoyed it uh, subscribe give me a thumbs up and really really share this one so I'll talk to you guys later uh, thanks for watching